All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another live event here. And today we're discussing everything to do with the hottest markets in this current week because, of course, we've seen a lot of huge moves, whether it's been from NVIDIA to the S&P 500 or even what looks to be heating up in the currencies. Today we're discussing it all. We'll be covering gold, oil, dollar index, S&P. My name is Thomas Atkinson. As always, I'm joined by Tyra Nabell this week, Ty. Yeah, good. Thank you, Tom. Welcome, everybody. I look, I'm looking forward to a big night of analysis. We've seen a really, really big week last week, obviously, uh, with mm -hmm. NVIDIA reporting uh, markets at all-time highs. But you know what? The, the dollar index looks like it wants to shoot up, and uh, there's a couple of currency pairs that we're going to certainly focus on tonight. So looking forward to getting in some live analysis, see if we can identify some good trading opportunities. Yeah, and just a quick reminder as well, we'll be going through those uh, kind of some top analysis techniques that we use so today we'll also have like a little bit of a section where we go through one of our favorites for the week and that'll be talking about the current technical analysis and everything else so ty let's get into the charts and i think the best place for us to start is going to be the s p 500 we'll jump on over to that because of course it remains in this strong bull trend and i think you know from a swing traders perspective obviously at the moment it's still is all signs of green because, of course, it's holding the 20 moving average, which we've mentioned several times on this show. And it made a new high last week, getting towards the 5100. Now, one thing about this that we don't see on the technical charts is that the 5100 level is also um, an options level as well, which means that kind of it's a, a bit of a what we call an options wall or a zone with a lot of resistance in it. Not only is it a psychology, psychological level, it's also very important from that aspect. And a lot of people still can't believe this market has been in such a strong trend. What are you seeing at the highs here across a lot of these market indices? Are you thinking that we're actually finally going to see a little bit of a sell or is it just too early to tell? I think, um, look, my opinion is that it's probably a bit of retail money now really pushing these markets up to these extremes. I think that uh, a few of the signs there are starting to you know, show the weakness in the smaller time frames. Now, look, uh, that's not to say that it's not going to you know, go shoot, shooting up and go to 51, 50. It may well do that. But I think the general consensus is most of the time markets will pull back to a decent level. We haven't seen a good level pullback on the S&P 500 in quite some time now. And and I think it's due. And, and look, the the market signs to me are just showing that just that little bit of weakness is just starting to creep in. We're starting to see lower highs and lower lows on a, a few of the smaller time frames. Uh, but you're probably just as importantly, the dollar index is starting to show a little bit of strength as well, which is generally you know, a sign <laughs> that things might be starting to turn around a little bit. The 20 moving average has been an absolute uh, stronghold. There's no question about that. We need to see that moving average uh, broken on the daily before we really take any of these moves seriously. But if we get that, uh, I think a, a decent pullback. Yeah, potentially down to 4,800, 4,700 is, is definitely on the cards. <clears throat> um, if we get that break below the 20 moving average, I think the momentum can carry it down there. Mm -hmm. And all that's going to do is give us potentially long uh, opportunities from those points. Like really, as we know, as traders, what we're looking for is the next trading opportunity. And that may not necessarily be the short move, but at around that 4,800 level or even a, a, as a bigger sell-off, potentially a 4,600 level, uh, there are some really good long opportunities from those zones. And, and that's what we're really looking for as traders, good opportunities mm. for the market to come back mm. and for us to rejoin a trend that is still in existence, by the way. Uh, but also at that point, we've got previous highs that are, we can aim for rather than going for you know out and out new highs that we've never seen before. Aiming for highs that are already there is a far easier way to trade, Tom. It is. I just had here the RSI on here as well, Ty. Now, it doesn't really matter what indicator you put on the market that's so aggressive, you're always going to see divergences. And what I thought I'd just do for everybody out there is this is just a standard RSI. We generally leave an RSI at the standard read. And with the MACD here, if you don't have this in trading view, this is actually called MT4 MACD, which you can look up inside of the trading view platform. It comes from MT4 MetaTrader, which I'm sure a lot of you that are watching today still do use with Pepperstone as well. And it's one of my favorite and Ty's favorite MACD indicators. So just a couple little tips there uh, that you might enjoy. But I agree, very strong trend. 20 moving average is the big issue. And while <clears throat> we've got a little bit of potential resistance here at 5,100, and we're seeing some weakness through the NASDAQ, which uh, you know I do think is holding that 18,000 tie. I just thought I'd bring this up for everyone so they can see it. Here's the 18,000. You can see it's found some resistance each time. So it kind of made a switch here, tried to get above 18K and has failed so far. It's coiling. 
So I think there might be an explosive move out in either direction. It could be today. Um, it could be actually for core PCE. Just a quick reminder, we do have a little risk disclaimer that will pop on the chart and we'll see you in just a second. <clears throat> Okay, so the NASDAQ tied, the S&P 500, you mentioned before the dollar index, correct? So I yes. think it's time for us to actually go and have a look at that because, of course, dollar index, this has been a, a little bit of a conundrum because, yes, it did close below the daily 20 moving average and give a lot of people, I think, and myself included, that little bit of hope that we were actually going to see some weakness in the dollar and therefore a really strong euro trade. It looks to be reversing here, which shows that it's probably been a sign of a trap. You'll notice I have an alert at 104.1. And why I thought this was good to bring up in a few ways is because underneath the 20 moving average around here is often where you might start to think about entering into, let's say, a trade because it's under the 20. You know, that's a pretty significant thing that it hadn't done in a while. Obviously, it hadn't closed below the lows here. But this is an area where you're looking at, um, at a position that you might think about scaling into. now. This is a concept that I think a lot of traders, you know, sometimes miss out on. And what I mean by that is that they don't scale and instead they go all in on some type of position. It's really important when you have, let's say, a uh, weaker signal that you consider scaling, isn't it? Uh, yeah, most definitely. You don't want to be just going all in because it doesn't give you the opportunity uh, to react if the market does actually something that's unexpected, which yeah happens occasionally. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes yep. the market isn't absolutely going to do exactly what you want it to do. So you want to be prepared to be either uh, either, either add to the position or find yep. another position that's actually going to get you into a trade. Now, look, if you look at the dollar index, we'll go to a daily. Actually, that I think is the daily. Oh, that yep. is a daily. Okay. So yep. you can see we've got basically what is looking like um, a morning star. Okay. Uh, you can see on my um, on my chart, I can see I've got a 50 moving average there as well. The, the star is right on the 50 moving average. Okay. So although it did fall below the 20, everyone is correct there. The 50 moving average was still holding it. And, and in reality, you know, a morning star pattern could potentially see it get back to the 105. I mean, it, if it plays out the way we would like it to play out, the 105 is a potential target for it. And, and that's going to, you know, really help pull the euro down. Uh, I like it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I think it's, mm. a, it's, a strong, it's a strong candle pattern at a very, very strong level of uh, support. There's no question about that on the dollar index. And I think this tells us a lot, Tom, about what could be potentially happening to the indices because it is very possible that the dollar index is actually moving, dollar strength is actually increasing and maybe giving us a bit of a precursor to that potential weakness um, because we would expect that if the indices do start to um, you know, decline, that the dollar is only going to get stronger at this point in time. So it could be a little bit of a clue for us. Yeah, so that's right. The clue could be there. So for a while, it, it had been looking like the dollar had broken out and then it was coming down and it would hold in this de demand, which I guess in some ways it has. And then it's uh, it's broken through this trend line on the reversal. So it was looking quite weak. And then all of a sudden, in the last couple of hours, it's come out very strong. So as I mentioned, if you were going to the short side, it's a, it's a concept of scale. Um, and I don't blame uh, scale because if you actually look at the corresponding one, which was the euro, it had uh, actually moved through one of the key levels. So we'll mm -hmm. just quickly, actually, we'll stay here for one second. I just want to quickly mention Ty's level before. So yeah, 105.80 uh, to 105 highs seems to be the next level should this market break on the upside. And that's a precursor for a couple of things. Markets potentially going down, oil potentially going up, which we'll talk about later. And then, of course, yields also potentially breaking to the upside as well. So that's what we call the US 02Y yield, which obviously means there could be inflation round still. If there is inflation round, then what we're looking at is higher for longer rates. So we'll mention the euro and we'll jump on over to that because if you look at this on the daily, you can see there was a pretty nice downward trend line we spoke about last week. And maybe it's too early to tell exactly here because, of course, even with Ty's uh, star confirmation before, it technically hasn't closed, has it, Ty? So we don't no. know that yet. Uh, but this is going to be a very important point for uh, Euro traders, because it came up, it hit this supply, it's made some changes, it's obviously broken through this trend line that was on the downward side, which I think is a positive in itself, and it put in this candle here. So again, the the, the idea that the dollar is breaking out here, there's a lot going on in the next in these these next couple of hours, maybe even into the next day, because before core PCE, if the dollar index does breach up, 
It's got a long momentum move to run. And I think momentum yeah. is the storyline of the week since NVIDIA with its earnings. Everything's in a momentum large play at the moment. Um, and that, of course, will crush the euro back down. But if the dollar fakes out here and then goes back down again, then you'd be looking towards a very strong euro. This is probably one of the most important areas that we've had for major currencies in, I would say, months. Yep. No, I agree. And I think that the market has been waiting for this. And I think that um, we're starting to see those opportunities. Look, I get the feeling that the the dollar index probably faked out to the bottom side, not to the upside. I think that um, that little uh, break of the 20 moving average probably faked out um, the the sellers there, really. I think that this has been a very, very strong move up. Let's just say this, Tom, if this candle fails and ends up closing lower than that star on that morning star, then um, there's going to be some serious trouble for the dollar index. But, you know, that is not what it looks like right now. So it'll be very interesting to see what this candle closes at. But I do like the mm. momentum that I'm seeing, especially what, given what's happening in the indices themselves. Well, yes, it would obviously point towards that weakness in indices across the board. Mm. Uh, there is another chance as well that uh, there are some levels that we've left here for the euro. So we'll just quickly go through them on the smaller time frames. So from the bull side, if you're feeling bullish and you're liking things, uh, this this little level of demand is probably a zone of interest, which it's coming down to at this stage. You can see I've got an alert here of 107.887. And one of the reasons I have an alert around here is because it's a new low and that's going to go into this demand. So why I set alerts, and I think this is something that's really good for a lot of traders out there, set alerts. Don't bother watching paint dry in front of your screen. Set the alerts. Look for the structure inside of the alerts, whatever that is, your system, and then and then trade accordingly. So day traders, scalpers, anybody, you really need to be finding um, areas where you believe you have some kind of edge, and that's going to become very important. So Euro, there's two ways to play this with this week. Obviously, if we go straight up again, then I think it's actually a very strong move for the Euro because the dollar index will be underneath the 20. And if we do see weakness here and the euro takes out this level of demand, then it's most likely a pretty strong move towards the downside that's going to be, I would think, sustained while the dollar index flies towards maybe even a high 105. Now, we've mentioned a couple of other currencies throughout or a couple of other things throughout, Thai in terms of uh, major pairs. And I thought we'd just revisit one that we mentioned a few weeks ago, which is the HSI. And obviously, it's the Hang Seng Futures. I thought we'd revisit it just so you guys can see that uh, it's continued to play a pretty good role um, over the last couple of weeks. So this is obviously something we talked about down here together, and it's continued to rally. Now, it's obviously finding a little bit of pain at the moment in today's session, but this is one of those ones that's you know two steps forwards, one step back potentially, broke out of a downward trend line, and obviously it's coming off a low base. So it just shows you there are a lot of different markets out there and a lot of different opportunities. Copper, another one that we had on the show from, I think it was two weeks ago, and that was a really nice pickup uh, from actually your Q&A at the end. One of the members that I know has done one of our courses as well, Ty, um, he mentioned it, and that was a really excellent pickup. So again, some out of the ballpark, normal, not normal style markets that you might be looking at, but again, replication and opportunities the same. So yeah. we'll move over now to the markets, which is gold. Now, gold's been a bit of a tough trade, I would say, recently because it keeps trading around what I've got here, which is the most traded zone. Now, what that means is it's basically a level where you have a huge amount of trades and positions that have gone through, whether they're buys or sells. We don't really know because, of course, you know some of them have been buys through, but it's acted as either a resistance or a support quite a few times. So here's a resistance, here's a resistance, here's a semi-support that's happened before, here's a semi-support that's happened before. So why this is an important level is because what happens around here and the way that it shoots down or it goes up generally will be a slingshot trade. We know that there's large moves that happen off each side that can go either to 2060 or all the way back down to the 1980s. Now, are there any levels that you particularly like for gold this week, Ty, or do you think it's quite difficult to trade? I think it's a, a difficult one. Yeah, I've been covering it every morning in the streams. And look, I find unless you're absolutely scalping um, a couple of dollars here and a couple of dollars there, I think it's well and truly stuck between that band of around that 2010 and 2050. Now, look, if you can identify a couple of scalping opportunities inside that little band, 
Now, all power to you, but I think you've got to be doing it in the right trading session. It's a little bit difficult to, for mine. I, I think I would rather see a daily close, you know, under 2000 actually, or above 2050, because I think then we've got some clear momentum building up to actually push it into a direction where you can actually get hold of it. But at the moment, I think, yeah, the best you can do is probably aim for three or $4 at a time. And that's not really my preferred on gold. Well, no, it, 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 you really sometimes do want more from it. Wow. Uh, the one thing with gold is it's been making kind of like a nice level of switches recently, and it actually did a switch towards the upside over the last 24 hours, came down, traded around the most trade zone, which is not unusual, but you can see there's this weak rejection week. Now, I had an alert just above here, and I guess I'm going to leave it there just in case, which is I'll put it here so you guys can see it, 2034 kind of level. And the reason I had it there is because I, I figured that this type of candle is obviously a negative candle, it's what we call a shooting star. And if we did push to the low end, which we've done, and then we kind of rallied through that area, I would think that that's actually maybe a slingshot to take it back to that level that Tyrone was talking about, which was 2050, at least from a technical standpoint. So we we face like, yeah, I think a very tough time for gold. Obviously, everything's switching around here in this uh th at this particular time that we're live streaming which is the london session where we've seen dollar index make a big switch that's pressuring gold in the opposite direction and of course the euro as well so a lot of momentum here uh may be signaling there's there's some big changes afoot daily of course did close as a shooting star we know this is a very tough zone for for gold so maybe it's a little bit mm. tough to trade gold right now yeah. I think there are better okay. trades, Tom. I think there are better opportunities. Yeah, I think I think there are. I, I was I was liking it yesterday and liking the idea of, of maybe getting a scalp out of it, but it just doesn't seem to be um, wanting to play the game around here. So, Ty, the next one that we want to be talking about is obviously our kind of picks of technical analysis of the week. Now, I think you've got one that you'd like to walk everyone through. So what I'll do is I'll pop it on the screen, and then do you want to have a chat to us about what you like, what you don't like, what what you're seeing here on the uh, the Aussie USD. I'm glad you came to it um, now, Tom, because it, it's falling before my eyes. <laughs> it's literally mm. uh, starting yeah. to get belted. Look, I've been relatively bearish on the Aussie USD for yeah quite some months now because really it's been in an obvious downward um, channel. I, I, I will sequence obviously lower high, lower lows on a daily chart. Had a head and shoulders that it was trying to actually fulfill uh, this last move up. You know, I think that got caught in the hysteria of what was actually happening in the broader markets last week. But really, when you look at it on face value, the 20 moving average, yes, it was trading above it. But you've got to look at what the wicks are telling you on this particular currency. Now, yeah, we've got five wicks in a row there where the buyers just simply lost. Okay, so you can see, although it's just trading over the 20 moving average, no question about that, the wicks were absolutely belted every time. So... What that's telling us is that, yeah, there is very, very heavy resistance at that point. Like even though it's slightly above the 20 moving average, that is not something you want to be jumping in on. When we're talking about a break of the moving average uh, on the upside, we want to see very clear, sustained daily moves where a daily close is actually well above and actually closing in the better half of that uh, potential range of that candle. What we've seen here is a week of effect effectively buyers trying to get rally it higher and sellers bringing them all the way down to where the resistance is at around that sort of 65, 50 to 65, 70 area. Now, why I like the Aussie is because if we get a break a little bit lower and um, where we're at now is that support. There's no question about that. It's just, it's trying very, very, uh, very um, diligently to try and break that 65 cent mark. If we get a close, you know, at around that sort of 6480-ish to 6470 with a daily, uh, we are looking at a really good sustained move, I believe, down to around that sort of 63 cent mark. Now, it seems like a long way away, but believe me, it's not on the Aussie. The Aussie can get down there very, very quickly. And although there are a couple of little uh, troublesome uh, spots on the way down there, if enough momentum kicks in and we get a break below that, especially if we get a break below the 6450, I think you might be surprised how fast momentum can build up. And the next very, very heavy level of support is the 63 cent mark. So I think it's one to watch. Um, look, it's starting to show the signs already that it's, it, that it is weakening. The moving mm -hmm. averages, the 50 and the 20 are already starting to separate again, which is always a good sign. But most importantly, it actually held price at bay 
from actually doing what everything else was doing and, and that's going up. So the fact that it's done that, dollar index is um, yeah, strengthening, obviously helping it. The, the Aussie is not as um, heavily correlated inversely to the dollar index as Euro is, but it still plays obviously a significant part. So it doesn't, it certainly won't hurt it if the dollar index is actually rising from here. But right now, as it stands, if this candle closes like this tomorrow morning um, in the at the US close, I will be yeah quite satisfied that um, momentum is certainly starting to shift towards the downside, and we can start targeting some moves down to potentially sixty three cents. But we still had a little bit a little bit more work to do to actually get that confidence. But I would be yeah. looking at, and I, I think Tom, what I what I'd also like to do is probably take it to a smaller time frame and just explain to the um, listeners how we would actually trade that opportunity because I think it's important to you know really highlight like right now or. Trade into no, like, it or no, even into a one hour. So I'd probably go back to a one hour for people who are looking at an opportunity to get in on a trade like that where the momentum is good. We're effectively looking for pullbacks to that 20 moving average. So, you know, it, it's very rare that it will just drop like a rock um, and go all the way to the promised land. Most of the time, you're going to get a sequence of lower highs and lower lows. So, what we're looking for here is a pullback to the 20 moving average. Okay. So, that might be in the form of, that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, like I drew it myself. And that's exactly what happens, you know, probably 90% of the time. In normal trends, this is what you're going to see. So you don't want to be just jumping on it because you think, oh, oh wow, the Aussie's short. I, I really want to be involved. I don't want to miss out here. What you want to be doing is making sure that you actually get a good level. So, well, it does two things. Not only do you get a better price, Tom, but you get a better a stop loss because your stop loss means that you actually can just go behind the, the most recent high, which means that you can actually get, yeah, we're obviously always trading with the right risk uh, management in, in mind. Like we only want to be going at a maybe 1% risk uh, for the most part. It's a very standard trade. But what it allows you to do, it allows you to trade your 1% risk, but with a, um, mm -hmm. a bigger contract size because quite simply the stop loss doesn't have to be as far away okay and that's the important part your stop loss is still in a very good zone that should protect the trade but uh you're giving yourself a really good chance that that trend is going to continue and you're entering on a pullback so that's how we would trade it uh and that's really what you want to be looking at for you don't just jump in uh because it looks red uh you want to wait for that opportunity remember patience is key when trading and most of the time in a, in a good, healthy trend, the market will pull back to a, a good level like the 20 moving average. And, you know, if the momentum is still strong to the downside in the bigger timeframes, you generally see that continuation down. So uh, I just want to give a shout out to a couple of members from the Pepperstone staff that are helping out someone that's in the community tie that had a couple of issues. So it's great to see they're actually doing it live as we speak. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, look, I think there's a couple of lessons here. One of the things that was pretty, pretty big before was the wick concept. So, you know, that's just a little helpful tip. You know, when you get these wick rejections, wicks kind of hold the key, as I wrote on the chart. And the reason why what that is telling you is it's saying that every time those buyers are coming up, they're getting crushed back down. And you can see another example of that over on this left-hand side. So whether you're on a five-minute chart, 10-minute chart, one hour daily, of course, it means more on the higher the time frame because it means there's more, you know, one-way direction and then opposite direction. Uh, that's very important. And that's why we're saying day close here is going to be a big key because if this closed, let's say it went like this and it ended up being what we would call a bullish hammer, which is possible. I mean, it's not impossible. Everything's everything's technically possible when you've been around trading uh, for a long enough time. Uh, a, a momentum move higher from that point, if it did go to a new higher high and then actually broke through, that would be really significant because, of course, at, you have to give yourself, what are you seeing right now? As Tyron correctly said, we're seeing weakness. We're seeing a market come back down to a key level. Um, if it gets underneath this zone, obviously 6470, whatever it was, those zones there are going to really bring the floodgates of selling coming through. So today's daily close for pretty much any of these major currencies, I think is is paramount to be watching. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, good one. But, but okay. And while we're there, I'll just answer that question, uh, the sell by the bell question. Uh, does the head and shoulders neckline distance also correlate with the 63 cent mark? Yes, it does. Um, it, it's a, a very, mm -hmm. very strong indicator that that neck, neckline break we'll um, yeah, see a, a take profit target of around that 63, 62.80 level. So yes, it does. So we get a bigger uh, bigger trade confirmation as well on the bigger pattern. So it's a yeah, double bit of a double uh, banger there. All right, well, let's move over to, I guess, my concept of the week, which is going to be oil. Now, I've talked about oil a few times, and this one's an interesting one, Ty, because on the surface, the technical analysis is improving. 
obviously we've we've taken not a new high yet because that would be 79.83 but similar to you if we do manage to get through this level i believe a movement towards 82.50 to 84.50 which is the last supply is probably going to be quite pronounced and quite quick so i think this is another one of those quick momentum plays should it come through now there are some positive signs for this uh, that have come through what we call ctas which is uh, commodity trade advisors and what we're seeing from them is we're seeing them picking up a little bit of an extra position and that generally is an early sign of, of some turn ultimately we are technical analysis um, you know traders where we look for the the real reason which is the price action uh, to show us or the market structure to show us but uh, that's it that's another good little positive sign here for oil so if we scroll down what you'll notice is it's hold in a holding pattern we've seen buyers through the 76 strike We've seen sellers around the 78 strike. And you'll notice that we basically have an alert here at 7890, which is a zone where if the oil uh, trade is able to get through that, I think it's starting to give us an early warning that we're we're probably moving through the, the 80 strike as well and probably going towards that A250, 8450. So some interesting levels that could be broken very, very soon. Obviously, the real key is 79, you know, 90 to get the break above. Uh, but it's consolidating for one mighty move. This is what we call a coil. And when you have a coiling market or a channeling market or a ranging market, they're all the same thing, structured market. <laughs> they're yeah. all terms that we use for the same thing. Uh, then basically, once you breach out, you usually get quite a big momentum play. And we do know that in less than around 24 hours from now, we're going to get the core PCE index, which is one of the Federal Reserve's major kind of reads on inflation. And if oil starts to you know spike before it, that's preempting maybe a, a bit of a higher inflation number. And it probably will go with that DXY as well. So if the dollar index is strong, that's also helping the idea that oil might be coming through. Often they say inflation and dollar is together, yeah, Ty. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be that'll be a big one there. I do like those levels a lot. Um, I've been watching oil for quite um, yeah some time over the re over recent weeks, and it's been yeah, a trading bonanza from a technical standpoint because that's been very good. There's no question about that. You know, for a little while there was a bit too volatile, but from a technical standpoint now, oil has been very very tradable, especially up to that seventy eight level. But I agree, eighty two fifty is um, the first mm -hmm. marker for me. Uh, if we do get a break over that that sort of seventy nine dollar you know fifty mark. Um, especially on a daily close i think it's going to be happy days uh and, and it does move in these waves of oil like you'll find um and it can get there very quickly it's probably not going to meander up there like you'll notice if you look at it on a daily as well you know it's been peppering this level for quite some time and the pullbacks you know what i mm. find interesting tom is not only is it peppering the um that attack on the the higher 79 level but also the 20 moving average is bolstering it from below. So every time it does sell off a little bit from the 79, it's finding that support at the 20 moving average and quickly getting back up there. So really mm. not only is price itself compressing, but the moving average is starting to strangle with the resistance of 79. So when that happens, um, it's, it's kind of like a, it's, well, it's double the impact for me because you're getting price action compressing, but you're also getting the pressure from um, below rising to the resistance. It's actually forcing price uh, in a way yeah, to get past that level. And if it does, a $2.50 to $3 move could be uh, very, very quick and sharp. So I think one of the things that uh, this, I just moved over to Brent here. I just want to mention that it, it pays to look at both oils. So you want to look at US oil, which is often what most people look at. And then you want to look at Brent as well, or sweet crude, I think it's called. Um, mm -hmm. So the reason you do that is because they actually show slightly different technicals. Both have good bases. Both have big, strong levels in terms of resistance zones. And if we do get breaches from these levels, then of course, we're moving more than likely towards the next level of what we call equilibrium, which is the next level of supply or resistance on the left-hand side. So you're really looking for those signs of, of key pivotal zones. Usually a news event will take you through a key pivotal zone. And then it's your job as a trader, if you're a momentum-based trader, which a lot of trading is at the moment because of these faster markets that we're getting and the type of time frame we're in at the stage, then we're probably moving to those next levels. So for US oil anyway, the key zones are 82.50, 84.50, and we're currently looking for a breach of $80. And of course, we've, as Tyro mentioned, we're holding the 20 for now, which is uh, nice to see. So everyone's going to be really focused on the US two-year tie. 
Uh, this is going to be something that the next 24 hours, whether you're a com currency, commodity, or index trader, you're going to need to look at this one. Any break above 4.8, I think, is going to be you know pretty negative towards markets. What what really is the expectation is core PCE is meant to, to kind of moderate. If it doesn't moderate, then that means year on year, one of the Fed's favorite inflation gauges is going to be showing that there's inflation still around. And really for yields, that means higher or longer, which is, of course, yeah, you can say, well, the market's doing pretty well. It is. And across the board's doing all right. But at the same time, higher for longer is going to mean higher for longer with interest rates. So it's going to push them a little bit higher here. And that's going to push, I think, the markets to not like it so much. It could be that straw that breaks the camel's back. So I think an interesting uh, 24 to 30 hours moving ahead. Yeah, no, look, Tom, um, I took my lovely wife and kids out for dinner this weekend and we could not get into any restaurant whatsoever. So that's telling me that inflation hasn't quite set in yet. Uh, normally the best gauge um, from a- Or you a, go to really a, popular- <laughs> from, a user, from a user standpoint, generally what you want to be seeing, um, you can generally tell when the economy is starting to get on its knees, when people are all of a sudden tightening their belts. Remember, that's what the Reserve Bank, that's what our RBA wants, that's what the Federal Reserve wants. They need uh, to rein in spending because that's really what inflation is. Uh, and yeah, I think everyone was a little bit preemptive. All of the big commentary was a little bit excited about um, yeah, potential rate cuts, but yeah, I think you've got to be a little bit careful around that because people get a little bit too excited a little bit too quickly, Tom, and they start booking dinner for their family and um, they stop you know, good people like us getting in. So uh, that's my inflation gauge, and I say um, it's not done yet. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Inflation gauge is the restaurants, guys. You got, well, it is true, though. It often hits. You know, it's interesting. Last year, I was in some cafe and I heard the boss talking to some more employees. It'll get better soon. And I was thinking, oh, it must be it must be hitting them pretty hard. But that could also be that maybe the business wasn't doing too well. Let's move over to a business that also is suffering at the moment, which is a single stock that I thought might be worth bringing up, which, again, you can trade within the stocks of uh, Pepperstone's platform. And that's AAPL, of course, what's considered often the, I think, the canary for stock markets. Now, I've noticed, Ty, recently it's been going down and testing a lot of 180, yeah. and it's been making a series of lower highs each time. Now, this is a huge pressure point. It came in over the last 24 hours and actually offered an incredible good little scalp zone if you were trying to pick it up. You can see here it tapped that 180, similar to last time, and just instantly found buyers. This is actually a huge zone. 180 is not just like any normal level. It has so much more complexity to it in terms of, again, options levels, all sorts of things. But I think that if if Apple does break through 180, Ty, this is probably going to be something that really leans on the market going down. Again, a catalyst across the board. And uh, I think it's worthy of having an alert underneath this zone. Yeah, most definitely. It's probably one of the most important zones on Apple, short of the 200, I think. Um, the 180 and the 200 are probably the most important numbers you need to know about Apple right now. And the 180 is extraordinarily important because the support that it's, it's received there, not only in support, Tom, but also resistance. Um, on its way up there, it found a lot of resistance. If you zoom it right out, you'll see that it was a real stopping point um, you know, a few times as well, which when when, some, when support also becomes a, a role reversal zone, and we call that a role reversal zone when resistance does become support, it just adds an extra layer of um, yeah, protection at that point. So to me, if we... If if it um, fails to get defended at this point and we get a break below the the 180, I think that um, it could get to 170 very very quickly actually. Um, and mm. is it a catalyst for what's yeah, happening to the markets? Well, uh, I I don't know. I I kind of think yes. You know, um, yeah. It's, not, it's not worth 2.8 trillion for no reason. If it starts to go yeah. down, you'd have to think the Mag Six at least uh, are probably coming with it. Although Tesla will be doing its own little thing. And uh, mm. that, I just wanted to bring up that stock as well because Tesla obviously trading around 200. This is a very, uh, very key level for this stock as well. It had a horror show recently, to horror, horror, horror. But mm. uh, it did show a little sign of inverse head and shoulders here, which yep. is one of your favorite patterns. And you can see here, and it, it, it's been consolidating yep. there around the neckline and actually breached out about one and a half days ago. Failed to hold, but still, I think it looks actually it looks more bullish than the others. And this is actually also classic. A lot of people can't understand this. Sometimes the laggards actually get purchased up during market sells as well. So that a laggard will actually be kind of where funds move their money into to kind of store it. 
until they move back into the the quality that's been doing well, you know, over recent times. Yeah, it really does want that gap fill. I mean, it's all but got it. Uh, and yeah, the inverse head and shoulders pattern on that did actually uh, target the gap fill as its take profit zone. So it's a, it's a very, very interesting one. I do like it. Um, and it's showing the signs that, you know, of all the ones that, um, like I said, don't forget, it is very important to remember that the market uh, from an industry standpoint could certainly go down while this individual stock goes up. I don't think yes. that every single stock will go down, just like Tom said. Mm -hmm. um, there mm -hmm. are ones that have already been sold off that have yeah, probably been battered maybe a little bit unfairly um, or maybe fairly, depending on your your viewpoint of um, what their yeah. earnings were like. Uh, yeah. But, you know, not every single stock goes down. So really yeah, identifying those diamonds in the rough that are at a position where, you know, they could actually benefit almost like a defensive. I'm not saying Tesla's a defensive, but... You've got to, like defensive plays, you know, often go up when the markets are going down. And and sometimes these ones that do get sold off a little bit too aggressively can end up being, uh, they can have like a defensive like uh, tendency, Tom, because the money's got to go somewhere. Uh, and and yeah. they've got to put, they're going to put it in, in the place where the most likelihood uh, of an up move is prevalent. So, yeah, no question about that. So, so we're going to take some questions now, Ty, from the chat. So chat, put in your questions now if you want us to do a little <laughs> bit of live analysis on some markets. And um, I like that comment, by the way, from Sal, Sal Butterbell. <laughs> welcome, welcome as well for uh, WZIPG. You've come to the right place. Yeah. Don't worry. It's all good. I don't know how you yeah. got here either, but it, but it, welcome, welcome. Yeah. It uh, must have been so, in a moment so, of very, very mental um, clarity hit you. Mental clarity, you, you, you think? Want to mental be here? clarity, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, hopefully for WZ. Uh, so here is uh, obviously crypto. Now, everyone's talking about Bitcoin at the moment. I'm sure a lot of you would be interested in the crypto uh, sphere. And, you know, it's actually amazing because it doesn't have anywhere near the hype on it had over here. But Bitcoin's done it again, Ty. It's making a move for an all-time high, which is a very serious move. Obviously, the rest of the crypto verse is, is moving as well, but nowhere near. And that's pretty normal. Bitcoin usually goes first. Ethereum generally goes second. And then you see the others. But uh, this is this is almost on history levels already, and I've got to say I didn't probably expect it. I looked, the Bitcoin ETFs and stuff were a pretty big deal, but I didn't expect it to be rallying to sixty so quickly. I thought it might have struggled a little bit around this uh, this fifty two, and we would have seen Ethereum take over. And Ethereum, don't get me wrong, it's moving towards the next target as well, being thirty five hundred. But you can see the difference in play up. This is where Ethereum was at the heights of Bitcoin. This is where it is now. Big differences. But uh, the rise of crypto again is certainly coming through this halving cycle and uh, it's in a big way. I'm sure there's a couple of people quite happy about that. Yeah, it's been amazing. And it kind of, if you haven't been watching it clearly, um, it, it snuck up on you, hasn't it? Like it really exploded. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's, it's, yeah. it's seriously exploded in the last yeah. kind of month. Yeah, yeah, absolutely exploded. And, and in reality, you know, like we've mentioned a few times, and we've looked at that quite a while ago, Tom, when Bitcoin was actually coming down, that it has become quite technical from a trading standpoint. It's not the mm -hmm. um, the wild, wild beast that it used to be or some of the uh, other coins or the altcoins were when they first come in. Like, yeah, there's no technical that could read um, yeah, what was actually happening in the charts. But Bitcoin now has become, it, it's been around long enough to be able to establish itself as a, a trading proposition both up and down, and that's where technicals come into it. So it's certainly one to watch for people who haven't looked at it before. It might be a time to have a look at it and say, well, okay, I can identify patterns just like I can on the S&P 500. So yeah, for all intents and purposes, they do similar things from a technical standpoint. So identifying the technical moves and being able to trade them uh, is definitely interchangeable, whether it's a, a Bitcoin or whether it's the indices and of course, uh, Apple or Tesla. So uh, we've got a question here. How do I set alarms in MT4? Well, MT4, I believe you can still get the Pepperstone Advanced Trading Tools, Ty. Is that correct? So I think so. Yeah, I think that's what they're called still. So um, what I, think I would MT, suggest even an MT5, I think. MT5 have got them too. MT5's got the same thing, yeah. So what yeah. I would suggest you do is contact your Pepperstone representative and they should be able to hook you up, I hope, with, uh, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, with the uh, alert, um, the advanced trading tools i believe and that has the alarm functionality in it so it's an excellent tool anyway if you can get it it has all these extra little features which i quite like really brings an extra dimension to mt4 and mt5 
So I uh, highly suggest that for anyone at Pepperstone that you reach out to your account representative and try to, you know, get some extra technology. Why not? Uh, here's a question that says, um, oh, the, the crypto can be sometimes a little bit expensive to trade. Um, yeah, that, that's in general, you'll find that that's through most of the industry. It's because it moves quite quickly. So you'll notice that there's different cryptos have different spread levels. Uh, Ethereum has a lesser spread than obviously Bitcoin overall. And you'll find it through the whole industry. So it, it is it is one where you get exceptionally big moves. But I remember, Ty, you know, we weren't stopped from trading currencies back in the day when when the pound yen, which was known as the beast and the pound odd. I remember the pound odd used to have like a, a 40 pip spread on it, <laughs> yep. which was a long time ago. So, you know, th there are still opportunities. You just have to change your time time frame for it. So you're not going to be wanting to go with maybe a, a three minute trade. You might want to go with maybe a day trade or a multi-day trade. And, and there That's are right. still great opportunities there. 100%. And you've got to remember also that, you know, look, and this, the reason why all of you are here, of course, is because um, you're obviously Pepperstone clients. And um, with Pepperstone having you know, the, the vast reach that it has, uh, you're going to get the tighter spread. So, you know, the thing is, especially with things like some of the exotics, especially like, like Tom said, you know, in the day, um, 30 or 40 pips was not even unusual. Like imagine now, imagine the outright outcry time. If the, if the pound USD had a 40 pip spread on it at, at 9am in the morning, it'd be, Oh my God, it'd be, it'd be crazy. But back in the day, and I'm not, I'm only talking maybe 10, 12 years ago, it was actually quite common. Uh, so yeah, really for what we got now to work with, uh, it's actually quite incredible. Mm. That's right. It, it is incredible where it's got to. A comment coming in from Sal by the Bell saying with Bitcoin, you see the volumes going into it right now are really big. And then, of course, we're already there ahead of the what we call the halving cycle, which is coming up. Yes, the halving cycle is coming up. It's often considered a bit of a big bull time for, for crypto, but we've never seen this before. We've never seen Bitcoin move so, so aggressively into the halving cycle. I think it's a uh, Maybe it could be a bit of a buy the rumor, sell the fact from a TA perspective, but we have no reason to believe that just yet. Uh, the Gecko says here uh, it was more expensive last year, and that's why it's getting a little bit uh, better. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just because liquidity is coming back into it, yep. so you have less liquidity, and as a market matures as well, you improve with liquidity. So the beautiful thing about crypto is it is getting that maturity that's coming through in it, which gives you that liquidity that you're, uh, and therefore cheaper spreads and all sorts of things. So I guess to recap this week, Ty, it's going to come down to Core PCE, which comes out at 8.30 a.m. Thursday uh, market open. Uh, so that's for New York market open. And that's going to be at 8.30 a.m. New York time. So make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, and that's going to be something you want to look at. The other one that you're going to want to be watching is, of course, uh, what happens with this dollar index over the next 24 hours. Because at the moment, it's obviously rallying up here with a big switch. If it does manage to hold that, this could be a very significant, you can see one of my alerts went off just then. Um, this is a significant change of what was looking weak. So we mentioned before, and I guess one of the little top tips we'll leave today with is scaling is okay. Um, there's no problem with doing a scale. And even if you were short here on the dollar index and you'd put in, let's say, a third of your order, because that's actually very valid, you might have been early. If you do end up losing on that position, remember, you only lost on a third of your order. So the great thing about it with scaling concepts is that you reward the trade as it's going into your direction with extra amounts. And that's a big change, I think, for a lot of people in psychology. So if you get a bit of a tip out of today's live market analysis session, remember that there's no harm in doing a bit of scaling into your position, especially if you're thinking about a swing that can save you from making, because usually you know how it is with trading. Yeah, You go into it, you either it goes into your favor and it goes pretty well, Maybe it stuffs around for a while, but in generally speaking, if it goes bad, it's going to go bad pretty quickly. So if you scale in, you scale in, you see it moving into your direction, you take your extra position, you get a full load of what you need. And then of course, hopefully it goes to your take profit target. So that's a little bit of a tip for today. I would say if you haven't ever done scaling, potentially think about bringing it into your systems. Ty, do you have anything that you'd like to let everyone know from today session? Yeah, not only that, I think um, well, look, we're starting to see the moves and I, I think we'll have, be having a very different conversation next Wednesday, Tom. I think that uh, I don't think the market mm -hmm. can sustain okay. holding these levels. I think we're going to see a very interesting end to the week uh, and start to early next week as well. Of course, we go straight into non-farm payroll next week. So it's, it's just never ending. The news is always never ending. But I think that um, 
the markets are going to give us a lot more clarity over the next 24 to 48 hours in particular. So I'm um, looking forward to it. So look, if you've uh, loved what you've seen and uh, you do enjoy these live streams, give us a big like uh, and certainly let Pepperstone know because yeah, we are yeah, brought here by Pepperstone. Uh, we sure. have been working with Pepperstone for a very, very long time. Uh, and we love working with them because they bring um, yeah, the best of what they can to the trader. We, we are here for you. So if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see uh, or what you would like to hear about, certainly let them know because they will pass that on to us because we obviously want to bring you the most valuable information that is relevant to you. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you at the same time tomorrow on and tomorrow, <laughs> the same time next week. Um, and we will, we do apologize for the slight delay we had earlier today. We mm. had a couple of technical issues. Yeah. But, thanks for sticking uh, around guys. All good. So thank you for sticking around. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck out there today. Big daily closes. And uh, I think we're going to be having a very interesting discussion next week. So catch you for now. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks everyone.